It's the GCN Racing News Show. Coming up this week, is it possible to win both the general classification and sprint stage of the Tour de France in the modern era? We investigate using actual stats. We also take a look back at the return to cross of Voss on Saturday, the much-awaited super prestige at Zonneville on Sunday, and some high-profile rider transfers. But we're going to start with the Super Prestige in Zonovan. Always one of the most eagerly anticipated cyclocross races of the year with those infamous sand dunes. The pros make it look easy, but it's far from it. So to give you a better idea, here's Ollie making it look hard. I mean, it's hard, but probably not that hard. That said, a couple of mistakes in the sand and probably the absence of Matthew van der Poel were instrumental in the outcome of the men's race. Young Brit Tom Pidcock briefly led at the midway point of the race, but then this mistake on the 180 degree turn saw him lose a chunk of time, putting Tonez into the driving seat. Coming into the last lap, it was a battle between Arts and Laurence Swake, but then this happened. Oh, lines, Harriman's hits the front on this one, Arts. Oh, Swake goes down, that's it. Heartbreak for Laurel Swake on that descent. There was no coming back from that for Swake, which left Arch to take what was, in the end, a comfortable win. In the women's, it was yet another all Dutch podium and a very young one at that. Anne Marie Vorst out sprinting Kaylin Del Carmen Alvarado on the line, with European champion Yara Kastelijn taking the third step of the podium, despite a fall in the sand on the second lap of the race. I would like to actually thank you all once again for your support of our live cyclocross coverage here on GCN Racing. We've been absolutely loving being able to bring you some of the top level races each weekend. If you haven't yet subscribed though, please do so by clicking on the button that you'll find below. Next to that, you'll also see a bell icon. Clicking on that will mean that you are notified every time we go live or upload a racing video. Uh, coming up this weekend on G's in Racing, we'll have the next round of the DVV Trophy on Saturday. That one is live worldwide, except for the Belgium and the Netherlands. And on Sunday, we've got the US National Championships. Now, on to our main talking point for this week. Uh, last week, Jumbo Visma announced that Dylan Grunewagen has signed a new four-year contract. Not a huge surprise, given his success at that team over the past four years, in which he's taken 48 out of his 50 career victories. But with the team's recent Grand Tour success and move towards general classification riders, we've been wondering how it's going to work at the Tour de France next year. And so we, or more precisely, resident statistician Killian Kelly, have been looking at similar situations from years gone by. So, since trade teams were reintroduced to the Tour de France back in 1969, the yellow and green jerseys have been won by two teammates on three different occasions. The most recent was as far back as 1997, when Jan Ulrich and Eric Zabel combined for the telecom team. Uh, Zabel, in fact, though, did it the year before too, with his other teammate, Bjarne Ries. And then the only other team to have done this particular double was Peugeot in 1977, when the Tour de France was won by Bernard Thévenet and his teammate Jacques Eclassin won the green jersey. But no matter how good Dylan Grunewagen is, as long as Peter Sagan is in the Tour de France, it's very unlikely that anybody else is going to win the green jersey. So let's widen the scope a bit to simply stage wins. How often does that happen that a team wins the Tour de France with one rider and also manages to win a stage in a bunch sprint with another? Well, apart from the three combinations that we've already mentioned, again, since trade teams came back to the Tour de France in 1969, there are only a further two pairs to add. First up, Joop Zoutemelk and Jan Rast for the rally team back in 1980. And then the most recent team to do it was Team Sky in 2012. That was when Bradley Wiggins won the Tour and Mark Cavendish won three stages in bunch sprints. That one included the final stage for the fourth consecutive year for Cavendish, which gave us that iconic image of Wiggins in yellow leading out Cavendish in the rainbow jersey on the Champs-Élysées. Then if we widen the criteria further still and ask how many teams have put a ride on the final podium in Paris and have also won a bunch sprint stage with a different rider, the answer is, again since 1969, a further 16 teams. 
But perhaps relevantly, since 2001, it's only been done a further three times. By Rabobank in 2008 with Denny Menchoff and Oscar Freire. In 2012 with Vincenzo Nibali finishing third and Peter Sagan emerging as the talent we know him as today. And finally, and perhaps most interestingly, Jumbo Visma did it themselves earlier this year. They had Steven Kreisweig on the final podium in third place and incredibly, they actually won bunch sprint stage with three different riders, something which had never been done before. Uh, they being Mike Turnison, Wout van Aert and Grunewagen. So, there's no doubt that Jumbo Visma successfully combined sprinters with GC riders this year, but now they've signed Tom Dumoulin and they've got another Grand Tour winner in their number now with Primoz Roglic. And they want to step up and really challenge Team Ineos for Tour de France supremacy. Can they do that whilst also supporting the idea of challenging for bunch sprints? Well, they'll already have a better idea than most teams about how difficult that is. Team Ineos don't do that. Uh, they did once uh, the aforementioned Cavendish in their ranks in 2012 because they kind of had to because it was Cavendish and he was world champion at the time, but they've never done it again since. Serious Tour de France contenders just don't tend to have sprinters in their team. Nibali, Contador, Schleck, Quintana, none of them ever had a sprinter alongside them when they were trying to win the Tour de France. It's one of the major reasons, in fact, why Cadell Evans left Silence Lotto for BMC back in 2010, because he was fed up with having to share his tour team with Robbie McEwen. And the very next year, in fact, he finally won the Tour. And since then, it's become even harder for a team hoping to win the Tour de France to justify bringing a sprinter along too, because team sizes were reduced from nine down to eight a couple of years ago. So, it is now time to throw it out to you at home and ask you to vote in this week's poll. Can Jumbo Visma successfully back both Grunewagen and their GC rides at the Tour de France in 2020? Or will spreading of talent see them underperforming both? There is a link to the app poll in the description just below this video. Uh, but make sure you also give your reasons too in the comment section just down below here on YouTube. Now speaking of polls, it may well be that Naira Quintana has to share leadership at Arkea Samsic next year with the sprinter Nasa Buani. Last week we asked you to vote on the GCN app as to whether Nairo's move to the French team would make or break him, and 63% of you said you thought it would be the worst year of his career. Although to be fair, many of you asked for a third option of something in between, but then that wouldn't have been quite as much fun. I for one though really hope that he thrives at Arkea Samsic. It would be great to see him back at his best at the Tour de France, particularly now he's riding for a French team. Right, we're going to go back to cyclocross momentarily now and the Ethius Cross from Essen on Saturday, which saw the return of Mariana Voss, the greatest female cyclocross rider of all time and arguably the best of all time full stop. And she didn't waste any time in adding another win to her bulging Palmares, eventually coming home over a minute clear of her nearest challenger. That nearest challenger though is only 18 years old, Blanka Katavas, the Hungarian national champion. What an amazing result that was for her. In fact, she is this week's GCN Rider of the Week. In third place on the day was Britain's Anna Kay, which means that, according to Cyclocross24 on Twitter, we had the least surname letters of any Cyclocross podium ever. Voss, Vass and Kay. Easy for me to pronounce, at least. Uh, the podium with the least amount of letters ever in any race, though, was also, we reckon, the least amount possible. Just six. That came on stage one of the 2011 Seiram Lake stage race in China, where the podium consisted of Hai Jun Ma, Ji To Ji, and Ying Chuan Ga. Ma Ji Ga. And then the most ever letters was 78. That was on stage three of the Women's Tour de l'Ardèche with a podium that consisted of Svetlana Bubnenkova Stolbova, Diva Raginskiena Tuzlaite, and Yolanta Polikovicute which, as you can see, is slightly less easy for me to pronounce. In the men's Ethius Cross, it was Quentin Hermans who took the win, almost a minute ahead of Lawrence Swake with Pidcock in third. Uh, that race also saw the return of Zdenek Stieba, former world champion, uh, who finished in 12th place. In other news, Stuart O'Grady is set to become race director of the Tour Down Under in 2021. He will succeed Mike Turter, who has overseen every edition since the race's inception in 1999, with 2020 being his final year in the role. Barring Merida, new home to Mark Cavendish, has officially rebranded itself for 2020, when it will be known as Bahrain McLaren. And Merida, though, will still, however, remain as the team's bike supplier. 
Speaking of bike supplies, Astana last week confirmed it will switch from Argon 18 to Willier next year, uh, whilst Cofidis will be on De Rosa, meaning that both the team and the manufacturer will be back in the top division of the sport for the first time in many, many years. Rolf Aldag has joined Canyon SRAM as a sport director. Uh, he spent the last few years with Team Dimension Data, but had a public fallout with manager Doug Ryder at this year's Tour de France. And in fact, he's already started working with his new team at their Malaga training camp. We shall finish now with a few bits of transfer news and starting with Rowan Dennis. And it's unusual for such a big name in cycling to still be without a team this late into the year, but after his fallout with Bahrain Merida, the world time trial champion has, until now at least, not put pen to paper with another team. What is now confirmed is that Sam Bennett and Shane Archibald have signed with De Kerning Quickstep for 2020 and beyond. Now, I made quite a blunder last week when I omitted Sam from the biggest sprinter transfers. I shall blame it on too much bike riding and the fact that it wasn't actually signed until after last week's show, although I know that is a poor excuse. Anyway, you would imagine that Bennett will be hopeful of starting the Tour de France next year with the aim of winning at least one stage. Uh, he has taken part in that race before, but not since Peter Sagan joined Bora Hansgrohe in 2017. And finally, Tom Yelta Slagter will move from Team Dimension Data and next year be riding for the B&B Hotel's Vital Concept team. Okay, that is all for this week's GCN Racing News Show. Next week, we'll be back with the next round of the DVB Trophy in Ronsa and the USA National Championships. Can Katie Compton win her 16th national title in a row? Make sure you don't miss out on that one. In the meantime, as mentioned, I am back on my bike. Uh, so I've promised to ride a thousand kilometers before Christmas and I'm currently up to 840. So my new aim is to actually ride the number of kilometers with the number of likes I got on the GSIN app post that got me into this mess in the first place. Uh, that is currently a little under 1500. Uh, whilst doing it, I'm trying to raise as much money as I can for a charity that is very close to my heart, World Bicycle Relief. Uh, you can find a link to my Just Giving page in the description below. And I've been really enjoying being back on my bike. Uh, just down here is a video showing my favourite local ride in the New Forest, where I was joined by three very special guests. I'll see you next week.